Hey, it's Rihanna. Welcome back to my channel. On today's episode of Tasty Tuesday, I am making this keto-approved chicken enchilada bowl. So stay tuned for step-by-step -step instructions on how to make it. The ingredients for the chicken enchilada bowl are two to three chicken breasts. Um, I'm using chicken thighs, so this is six chicken thigh pieces. They're kind of small. Three-fourths cup red enchilada sauce. Make sure you read the label. They all have different serving sizes and different uh, carb content, so pick the one that works best for you. This one is from Aldi. I found that for the serving size, it was actually better carb-wise. Um, for 110 grams, so 3.9 ounces, there's five carbs, um, one fiber, so four net carbs. One fourth cup water, one fourth cup chopped onion, one four ounce can of green chilies. Again, check the label. Um, I have Aldi and Walmart brand in my pantry and the Walmart brand actually had less carbs. This was one, um, one carb for two tablespoons. And the Aldi brand I think had one or two carbs. Wait, this is one, uh, the Aldi brand had two carbs for the same serving. Since we don't eat rice, um, and this is a low carb slash keto meal, um, you wanna have whatever you're gonna serve it over. I have this bag of green giant rice veggies cauliflower, and I haven't tried the riced um, cauliflower yet, but I had their veggie tots earlier this week and it was really good. Um, this has four carbs per cup. There's four servings in this bag, and it's two net carbs per serving. And then you want whatever else you're gonna use to uh, top your enchilada bowl. So uh, tomatoes, avocado, cheese, jalapenos, whatever that may be. So technically the first step is to cook the chicken, but um, my onions aren't diced already, so I'm gonna dice the onions before I cut up the chicken. I prefer to cut up the chicken um, before I cook it just because I think thigh meat cooks a little bit differently. So I have a little bit more than a quarter of a cup, but that's all right. I like onions. Just make sure you account for that in your macros. Because onions do have a lot of carbs. But I mean, I figure Honestly, whenever it comes to this kind of stuff, um, I, yes, I still track them, but it is something that I'm not too hard on myself about because it's, you know, it's a vegetable. Next, I'm going to dice up the chicken. So I'm putting on gloves because I hate handling chicken. Like, it stresses me out, guys. For some reason, dark meat stresses me out more than white meat. I don't even know why. It seems like it's juicier or something. Ugh. So juicy. So I just finished icing up the chicken and I put it in the skillet to go ahead and start cooking. While it's doing that, since I have this giant, what is this? 28 ounce thing of enchilada sauce. I'm gonna go ahead and measure out what I need for the recipe and put the rest in my little container. So we need three fourths cup of the enchilada sauce and we're gonna be adding it at the same time that we add the onion. So I'm just gonna put it in the same bowl with the onion so I don't um, dirty up another dish. For tracking purposes, I'm going to keep the container cause I wanna scan it in my fitness pal. That's a lot of enchilada sauce. I'm gonna have to find a recipe to use that. I wonder if I can freeze this. Cause it'll go bad before I have a chance to use it all. When the chicken is um, starting to get lightly browned, it doesn't have to be cooked all the way through. Go ahead and add your enchilada sauce and onions, as well as the green chilies and the fourth a cup of water. My recipe did not call to drain the green chilies, so hopefully that was right. You wanna bring it back up to a simmer and then cover and cook until chicken is cooked all the way through. And then you want to continue simmering for like 10 more minutes. So probably a total of like 15 minutes of simmering. 
if you are using chicken breast, the recipe does say um, to pull the chicken once the chicken is cooked, shred it, add it back to the skillet, and simmer for 10 minutes. Since I'm using chicken breast, and I, I mean chicken's thighs, and I already diced it up, I'm just going to let this simmer for like 15 minutes. So I see that it, it's starting to boil again. So I'm going to go ahead and cover it, turn the heat down just a touch, and let it simmer. So while the chicken is simmering, I went ahead and punched in the um, ingredients into my fitness pal so I can get the macros for y'all. Um, I separated it into four servings, so if I end up having more, I'll adjust it. But the recipe does say four to six servings, so I guess it depends on your serving size. But for four servings, there's 243 calories. 7.3 grams of fat, 8.6 grams of carbs, um, 2.3 of those being fiber, so that makes it 6.3 net carbs, and let's see, so that's 13% carb, 26% fat, and 61% protein so for keto that's not the right percentages or whatever but that's just for the actual meal it doesn't account for the topping so if you add avocado sour cream cheese that's going to add a lot of um, fat and with the avocado it'll add a lot of healthy fat as well so I'll tell you once I add my toppings what it ends up being um, but this is one of those things where depending on what ingredients you use it's going to change so if you use chicken breast it's going to be lower calories lower fat um you know depending on the brand of enchilada sauce there's all these variables so you want to make sure you're using my fitness pal or some other um you know calculator to track your macros so i just looked at my macros for the day and i could have guessed that it was this way um I'm actually feeling pretty sluggish and headachy and pretty hungry actually. And so I had assumed that I probably wasn't having enough fat today. So I just looked at my little pie chart and you can see that my fat percentage is too low. I'm at 64% fat and 30% protein for the day. So um, yes, you need to look at your actual grams, but you also need to look at your percentages. And I can tell that I'm lower in fat because I have been hungry like all day. All right, we'll be back whenever the enchilada bowls are done. This is what I'm topping my enchilada bowl with. I have 55 grams of avocado. I have 28 grams of shredded cold blue jack. I have 25 grams of tomato. I'm not really a tomato fan, um, but either way, watch out. There's lots of carbs. And then um, 30 grams of regular sour cream. Everything is done. Well, the chicken is done. I'm just waiting on the cauliflower rice to come out of the microwave, and then I will plate everything and show you the finished product. Okay, so cauliflower rice is done. One cup of cauliflower rice. And then I tasted this a little bit while it was simmering, and it tasted a little spicy to me. So I'm mean not. I don't want a lot of the juice. So I'm using a slotted spoon. Getting about two spoonfuls. Maybe a little bit of sauce. All right, guys. So here's the finished product. Yum. Um. Let me just. Mix it up a little bit and give it a taste. I'm really curious how this cauliflower rice came out. Try to get a little bit of the chicken. It's actually super flavorful. I would even, like I thought the sauce was a little spicy, but with everything else, I might actually put a little bit more sauce on it. Um, because it kind of, you can't really taste it once you've got the cauliflower and the avocado and everything like that. I hope you enjoyed this second episode of Tasty Tuesday. Stay tuned for tomorrow's episode, which will be a weight loss slash keto update. Don't forget to subscribe. Click that thumbs up button. If you have any recipe suggestions, um, leave them down below and I will see you guys next time. Bye!